All right, here are solutions to perfect problem two for Math 95. Um, this is one of those distance equals rate times time problems. Um, so it might help to set up a little grid. What the problem is gonna give us is information about rowing upstream and rowing downstream. So we'll have all this information for both upstream, which I'll put on this row, and downstream, which I can put on this row. Um, Okay, and then if I go through and read it, it says I rode 24 miles upstream. It seems like a distance for upstream. Um, and then 24 more downstream, okay. The total journey took nine hours. If the current in the river is two miles per hour, how fast do I row when there is no current? You might be able to fill out the rest of the information already, but it would be pretty hard to do, so I gave you a little hint. I said let T be the time spent going upstream. Okay, so they're saying make this little T right here and nine minus t, the time going downstream. Um, so that's how we can write algebraically that the total journey took us nine hours. This took us some amount of time, and then this took us the rest of the time, nine minus however much it took us to go upstream. Um, and then let x be the speed when there's no current. So what I want here is the speed when I'm going upstream. I know x is the speed when there's no current, so if I'm going upstream into two mile per hour current, I'm gonna be going two miles per hour less than x. So my speed will be x minus two. And similarly, if I'm going downstream, it would be x plus two. So here's all the information from the problem. And then it says to set up some equations. Um, the way you can do that is distance is equal to rate times time. Although a more, for, a more useful version of this formula, um, which is kind of what it gets at here when it says solve for t, is that time, if I divide both sides by r, I get that time is distance divided by rate. So I can take this second formula and make an upstream equation and a downstream equation, kind of using my upstream. I could say time is equal to distance divided by rate. And for downstream, I can do the same thing. I can say that the time, which is nine minus t for downstream, is equal to the distance divided by the rate, which is now x plus two here for downstream. And then as the hint kind of says here, I've solved for t in the upstream equation, so I can substitute that into the downstream equation, maybe it's time to change colors, and get nine minus, so I'm taking this downstream equation right here, but instead of writing t, I'm going to write 24 over x minus 2 because I just figured out that t was equal to 24 over x minus 2. So 9 minus t, this thing being t, is equal to 24 over x plus 2. That's what I got over here. And so now my task is to try to solve this rational equation. Um, so it's hard just to get to this spot. I think getting from the word problems to the algebra is pretty tough. And then this one specifically is a pretty hard algebra problem to do, but um, we'll work our way through it. First thing you want to do is find the least common denominator. I guess you can think about this 9 right here is 9 over 1. Then the least common denominator between 1, x minus 2, and x plus 2 would just be x minus 2 times x plus 2. Um, so what that tells us is that x cannot be equal to 2 or negative two. Because if x were two or negative two, then when we multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator in our next step, we'd be multiplying by zero. We'd be losing all the information. Um, okay, so I'm gonna multiply both sides of this equation by this stuff. Uh, sure, I'll show all the steps. If I multiply this first term by x minus two times x plus two, I get nine over, or nine times x minus two times x plus two over one. Same idea in this second step, or second term, I guess. You might be able to jump ahead a step and not write this one all out, but I'm gonna write it all out to try to make the solutions a little easier to follow. So I get from this line to this line by multiplying everything by my least common denominator. Maybe this even gets circled or something so it doesn't run into my work. Okay, and now what I have to do is simplify these. If I chose my least common denominator correctly, I should be able to get rid of all of the denominators. Everything should cancel out. Um, this x minus two and this x minus two cancel out. 
and this x plus two and this x plus two cancel out. So what I'm left with is just nine times x minus two over x plus two over one, which I don't have to write, minus 24 times x plus two is equal to 24 times x minus two. Again, over one, but you don't have to write that. So now this is a little bit easier to solve. It's still not easy to solve, but at least I don't have any fraction looking things, any rational expressions. Um, it'd be nice to get rid of all the parentheses. I can do that. X minus two times X plus two is X squared minus four. And then I can distribute into all of these parentheses. Get nine X squared minus 36 minus 24x minus 48. Be careful there, it's the negative 24 you have to distribute to these two terms. And that's equal to 24x minus 48. 24 times negative two is negative 48. Okay, um, let's see, now I wanna, since I have a quadratic equation here, it's supposed to be a squared, um, I wanna set it equal to zero. So I'll subtract 24x from both sides and I'll add 48 to both sides. And what that will give me is 9x squared minus 36. Let's see, if I subtract 24x from both sides, I'd have negative 48x. And if I add 48 to both sides, I just get zero. So I get here, which it might be easier to write this like that. Um, and then will this factor, er, this is going to be ugly. Okay, well, one thing I can do is all three of these terms are divisible by three. So I can factor out a three and get 3x squared minus 16x minus 12 equals zero. And maybe I need to pop back up here. If I'm going to factor, I guess I should have this equals zero. Um, I want to factor this 3x squared minus 16x minus 12. So let's see. Let's do that in a different color. Uh, the way I do that is I want to find two numbers that multiply to negative 36 and add to negative 16. Uh, let's see, 36 is six times six, that won't help. It's nine times four, that won't help. Um, 12 times three, that won't help. 18 times two, that might work. So let's see, if I choose negative 18 and positive two, if you multiply the two of those together, you get negative 36. And if you add them, you get negative 16. So I found the correct two numbers. Now all I have to do is replace negative 16x with negative 18x and positive 2x. And what I've done is I've turned this trinomial um, into something with four terms. Instead, three terms got four terms. And with four terms, I can factor by grouping. Um, it's supposed to be an equal sign there. Um, okay, so greatest common factor between these first two is 3x. If I pull out a 3x, I'm left with x minus 6. Uh, if I want to be left with x minus 6 over here, I'd have to pull out a positive 2. Um, so now I have x minus 6 in both of these, which I can factor out and be left with 3x plus 2. So what I've done, I guess my red arrow should really go maybe down here, is this equation I can write as, maybe even further, let's find some room. Eventually I'll find room. Three times, and then instead of three x squared minus 16 x minus 12, I got x minus six times three x plus two is equal to zero. So that tells me either three equals zero, that can never happen, x minus six equals zero, or x, three x plus two equals zero. Um, and if I solve these, this one's saying that x equals 6, and this one is saying that 3x is equal to negative 2, so x is equal to negative 2 thirds. 
Um, but then if you go back and remember what we were talking about, we were talking about speed. Speed can't be negative. Um, so negative 2 thirds can't be the answer. It means this must be my answer. Um, and that's finally the end of this problem. Uh, pretty difficult problem.